Mario so much, I gotta play this game. There it is, here we go. Here we go, here we go guys, come on! Ah, oh, the power up, let's go! Come on! You could probably say church ain't church. When you say church ain't church, doesn't mean that church isn't church. It's just when you go to church, a lot of times you're going to find what doesn't look like church at all. As a matter of fact, you're going to find what looks like pure entertainment. Now, should church, should a gathering, the word, the music, should it be entertaining in the sense that it holds your attention? That's fine. But if the goal is to entertain rather than to give the word, well, we got a problem. And that's what we're seeing nowadays. We're seeing more and more people who are more concerned with making people feel good, feel at home, feel comfortable, feel entertained, almost like uh, the guy in the movie, Are You Not Entertained? That's the goal. It seems the goal is to entertain people. Now, it's not just one church or just two churches, but recently uh, there was one, matter of fact, one of the largest churches in America and certainly one of the largest church system, multi-church uh, systems, that is life.church, you know, Craig Groeschel, they church had, their church had this uh, life.church at the movies. Hey, Life Church family, I am so excited. At the movie starts this weekend, and we have transformed our lobby into all things Mario. Come on in. You want to spread the word about what's happening because check out this lobby. When you come in, it's like you have been Now, could you imagine what it took to actually do this? And now this isn't just at one church, but at different churches. That's a lot of that's a lot of work. It's a lot of money, so certainly. Transported into the Mario game and movie, and what an incredible opportunity we have to invite people. So share this video: 8:30, 10, 11:30 on Sunday. We have a 6:30 on Monday night, and it's going to be an incredible month of us diving in to at the movies. As Pastor Craig takes movies and uses them to illustrate spiritual truth. And Why do you have to take movies to illustrate spiritual truth? Why couldn't you just use I don't know? the Bible to illustrate spiritual truth. And if you want to use an analogy, no problem. Listen, I don't, I like using stories and analogies to get a point across just as much as the next person, but sometimes you might go a little bit too far. Now, in this case, maybe the, the clip that I'm going to show you, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's pushing the line too much. <laughs> Okay, that that's the that's the children. That that's the children's church. And so maybe somebody said, you know what, okay, okay, fine. With the children, but let's just make sure the children are getting something out of it. Because obviously if you have an hour long service and it's just the word, a lot of children are gonna lose they're gonna lose focus. Children don't by nature, by definition, children are not as mature. And they have less self-control. So I can I could probably get by with that with this children. And and who who is who's this creature you guys said? You say his name is Bowser, whoever his name. I think I saw someone in the chat say his name is Bowser. That's with the children. It'd be one thing, and you could probably get a pass if it's just with the children. What if it's not just with the children? What if it's also with the adults? 
And no, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. That is a grown man in this little, what is it, Bowser, Bowser outfit playing the piano. He's in the middle of the church playing the piano. And then, of course, he's going to go on stage in a little bit. But maybe, maybe, maybe that's just a little too much, don't you think? With my straw and question though before we continue what is this i think i heard my grandchildren with that song this peaches 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 I, okay fine i guess it's a cute song for the kids but at church but that's not enough what he's doing we got to amp it up a little bit that little somber mood right there no let's let's make it more concert like peaches, 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 peaches. So nobody said and thought, hey, you know what? This is probably not a good idea. This might not go over well. I understand. I understand. We want to, we want to use what we have. We want to bring people in. I get that. As a matter of fact, I can even see where you might have a passage. Now you take the passage out of context, but I can see maybe you use this passage here that Paul brings up in 1 Corinthians 19. He says, so for though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more to them. To the Jews, I become as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I become as one under the law. Look, 21. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, that I might win those outside the law. 22. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might, by all means, I might save some. But does that open us up to do what he says, by all means, to use everything at our disposal? Think about it taken to its logical conclusion. Does that mean if, well, you know what, I want to bring the drug addict in, then I start doing drugs. Uh, because how well would that go over me literally doing drugs on stage? Because I want to appeal to the drug user or the drug dealer. They have money, too. So I might want to use uh, everything at my disposal to bring them in. What about the person that's struggling with other addictions? There's a lot of addictions we can think of if you did those on stage. Is that what we're supposed to do? That is not what Paul meant. Paul meant I'm not going to use elements that is not unknown to them. I'll use, I'll speak in their lingo, so to speak. It's never, ever, ever to be taken that I'll compromise the gospel, compromise the word. And there becomes a line that you cross where you, one, compromise the gospel, but two, also that you make it an affront to God because you make it out to be a spectacle more than something having to do with salvation. And again, this isn't just uh, life.church. Oh no, there's a lot of small churches and there are a lot of large churches. Recall Saddleback Church, they had something similar to this with, with Toy Story. You remember when, when both the pastors, the man and woman, they've got co-pastors out there now, uh, when both of them bring out this little, the stage is decked out in the whole Toy Story setup and they come out as Toy Story characters. Well, hi Bo Peep. Hey buddy. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you too. Are you at church? Yes we are. Welcome to Saddleback everybody. So it's, and what was funny is you, if you look at the bottom right below their names, it said the teaching pastor and lead pastors. Well, which one of them is a teaching pastor? Because I'm sorry, you don't need to do this to be, if this is what you need in order to get your point across, you're not good at getting your point across. If you don't have the ability to preach the word, then you shouldn't be up preaching the word. That's just a fact. This is just not, this is not show and tell. This is not dress up. This is, and listen, I don't mind you having a costume, a costume party. Just don't do it at the church because it sends the wrong impression. You could literally offend people who aren't on board with this. Let's just even, let's just even say, let's just even say, hold on guys, hold on. 
let's just say this isn't sin. Even if it weren't sin, it would still cause others to stumble because they would look and think, what in the world is going on? Because you're walking into a place that is assumed to be holy, or at least have the appearance of holiness. Now, it, it's gotten to the point, though, that it's really all about who can outdo the next person. Who is the best at it? Who, who is the best putting on uh, different theatrical performances and so forth? And if we got to bring some folks in, it doesn't really matter if we got lights, um, smokes. Matter of fact, let's just think back earlier this year, a few months ago, we saw somebody outdo everybody when it came to Easter. I've been laying in the cut for like three days. They thought it was sweet and started celebrating. That's a problem. That is a problem. And I, I don't I don't know many folks that thought that that was going to be the last of that kind of stuff that we would see. Churches, large and small, and those in between are doing it all over the place. And it's becoming a problem. You all ever notice how when just to take it shift shift uh different arenas in the political arena when americans send men dressed up as women over to other countries and these other countries the dignitaries there are looking at our dignitaries and they look at this grown man with hairy legs and who was grown a born a male who's dressed up as a woman who's representing the united states Forget what they're even talking about. Forget what they're representing. That foreign dignitary, that foreigner will look at us as though these people have lost their mind. This is who you send to me. When I have, when I want to get an impression of your country, this is what I get. The same thing with someone coming to the church. You mean to tell me when I come to your church, this is the impression that you want to give me because you want to reach some people? Well, James says this, and we've covered this before. Let's go at it. Let's cover it again. James 4, 4, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? You're doing your best to be friends with the world and make friends with the people of the world rather than your first mission. You got one job. You got one job only, church. One job. What is it? To take the people that are in the world who love being a part of the world to make them hate the world and to cause them to love the Lord so they can go to a different world. It's really that simple. The world is going to hell. You don't want to make friends with this world. You don't want to be attached to this very same world that's going to hell. You want to leave this world. Hopefully you are. And you want to bring as many people as possible. Don't love the world or the things of the world. Now, Mike Todd says something. He says something that has some, uh, it makes sense a little bit. I understand. I understand the point that he's trying to make. Poor execution, though, Mike. Poor execution in what he's going to say and what he's going to actually do. I want the person who feels lonely and isolated and like God doesn't care. I want them to see how amazing Jesus actually is and what God. Now, OK, you want the person that seems that feels isolated and lonely and, and, and let's add more to it. That's going through some things that's addicted, that's struggling, that doesn't know anything about the world or, or know anything about God. And they're stuck in the world. You want them to see how utterly and awesome how amazing God is. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that, but you would think that a pastor would understand how to do so. Paul, you know, you know what's funny? It's, it's as though Paul or others in the Bible didn't lay out a, blue, a blueprint. They literally laid out a, a blueprint. And so if you want people to see how amazing God is, if you want them to fall in love with him, if you want them to see his, 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 how wonderful he is, well then do what Paul said to do. Paul says, he says it like this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation or to salvation to everyone who believes. How about, Mike Todd, if you want them to see how amazing God is, how about you just do what Paul did? Give them the gospel. I think that would work out well. I think that would work out well. You know why? Because if you give them the gospel, you would ignite something in them. You would ignite something in them even if they're young in Christ. Now you can tell someone, here's how you can tell somebody who's a baby in Christ. They're in Christ and what do babies want? Babies want milk. 
So like Paul said, I'm sorry, like Peter says, like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. That is, that is, that is, if indeed, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. is really not that difficult. I think some of these people who may not be saved themselves, I don't know. They may be, may not be. They may just be very immature. I hold out hope for some of these people that they are saved. Just functioning out of order should not be pastors. They may be very good at communicating, good when it comes to music, good when it comes to theatrics and the arts. They might be very well skilled at that, but just not just not in the right position. They're in the wrong position. They should not be pastors because simply having people able to follow you does not mean that you're necessarily a good leader or at least a leader in that regard. You can be a good leader, but you're the wrong kind of leader for this position. It'd be like having the greatest quarterback ever in the history of mankind playing point guard for a basketball team. You're great with the ball in your hands if it's a different ball, different court, different arena. But over here, you're out, of, you're out of order. You're out of line. You're out of function. This is not where you ought to be. And what you're going to end up doing is, one, causing us to lose, but two, getting a lot of people hurt. And so I understand what, what Mike Todd is attempting, or I understand what he's saying. What he's saying, okay, I get that. We all, we all want people who are hurting, uh, who are lonely. We want all of them to come and know the goodness of the Lord. But you think that's the way to do it? And then listen to how he says we ought to, they ought, or at least they should, how they ought to go about doing it. He, it's, he's not saying that there's no limits, but dang near. God actually did for all of us. So I said, we're going to go to the edge on this. And they said, Pastor, how far on the edge are we going to go? I said, we're going to do everything short of sin. <laughs> that's not, that shouldn't come out of your mouth. That shouldn't come out of your mouth. We're going to do everything short of sin. No, let's not do everything short of sin. How about we do everything that calls out sin, everything that differentiates us from sin? Maybe Mike Todd and Life.Church and Saddleback and some of these other places that want to put on these theatrical performances, maybe they don't, they, maybe they've never had fun as Christians. Maybe being a Christian for them is not that fun. Maybe they have more fun. Maybe they enjoy their lives uh, when they were in the world. Maybe the pleasures of this world leaves a lasting memory more so than their life with God. Maybe they actually haven't had an encounter. Have, hmm, have, have any of you ever thought about that? Maybe some of these people who are actually leading people or trying to lead people to Christ haven't met Christ himself. Maybe they have not had an encounter. Recall when Jesus, after his death, buried and resurrection on the road with those men they had an actual encounter they heard about and talked about jesus but for the first time in their life they had a true encounter and when they encountered him did our hearts not burn the more this man spoke i'm convinced that a true encounter with jesus changes i'm i am thoroughly convinced so much so that even if i don't listen i don't care if you're a drug dealer or a drug user I don't care if you are a, a sex addict. I don't care if you've got all sorts of evil and violent thoughts in you. I don't care if you're suicidal. I don't care if your sexuality is in question. I don't care. I am thoroughly convinced that an encounter with Jesus changes everything. But the problem is you're not allowing people to encounter Jesus. You are, you're causing, to, causing them to encounter a Christ that really isn't Christ. You're causing them to encounter some, something that's not like God. And that's the problem. So much so that you've got people that do that they just don't care. They will do anything to bring the world into what they're doing. If the world comes in, fine. Let's, let's use vestiges of the world to make them feel okay at home. But we got a problem. If you want the person who's in the world to feel at home and comfortable within you're literally fighting against the Holy Spirit who is going to bring about conviction. So when the Holy Spirit brings about conviction and literally trying to work in this person's life, that they shouldn't be engaged in this activity, saying certain things, going certain places, doing certain things. But then you come back and say, yeah, it's okay though. That's fine. Listen, it's a, listen, I get it. I understand that, that, that uh, you are struggling with your sexuality. Listen, God is not going to judge you. God's not going to condemn you. The Holy Spirit is telling you something different, 
but these pastors are going against that. That's a problem, especially when you see how they introduce, they're putting, they're putting the world on stage. And it would be one thing if you took the words of certain songs and kind of changed them. I've seen people do that. Take a song that maybe it reminds you of a, a song, a secular song, but then you change the words. Okay, fine. But what about when you take that secular song, put it on stage, and you don't change the words, and you keep it secular on stage? Now, I didn't want to go too long because I know already some of you guys were starting to dance and move and so forth. I get it. I get it. But that was literally at, at, at a church. That was literally at a church. And who thought, it makes you wonder when you have these meetings, who's thinking this stuff up? Who, who's in the process? You, you, you all don't have a committee to vet this stuff. You don't run up the chain and maybe the, the, the at least, at least see, listen, I've, I've been at church and things were brought up said, hey, let's do this, let's do that. I've had the occasion to say, no, we're not doing that. Nope, sorry. Yeah, but Corey, this and that. Yeah, but no, we're not gonna. No, we're not gonna do that. Well, what about this? No, we're not gonna do that. But why? Well, the fact that you have to ask why, I'm not gonna tell you yet. I'll just, I'll tell you what. How about we let someone else start working with, <laughs> with the people other than you? And by the way, let me just say this too. Let me just say this too. For some reason, we seem to want to try and do certain things in the youth department first. That's not what you ought to do. One of my pet peeves, and it still is, is to experiment on the youth. Let's try it with the youth. Matter of fact, what do we do? We take the, the pastor or the, or the pastor in waiting, the one that wants to become a pastor. We take this person who we think might become a pastor or an elder or what have you. Well, let's let him cut his teeth on the children. Why? They're not experiments. That's... Let me just stop for a second and get on my soapbox and rant for a little bit. They're not for you to experiment with. You do not send an inexperienced man or whomever to go in there with the kids to experiment. Let's see if he can learn how to preach on them. Let's see if he can learn how to teach with them. No, why? The, the people that need the best teaching are those kids. The people that need the most maturity are those kids. Don't send some 21-year-old some himself who doesn't know much to go and experiment on the kids and they're trying all sorts of things. That's why we've got problems in a lot of these youth ministries today. That's why we've got 22 year olds um, getting involved with the 17 year old kids in there. That's why, because you didn't regard the kids as important enough to send your best. I would rather you switch it around, put your best with the youth and your least best, not a word, but your least best with the adults who are, who have to be more discerning. Don't you treat them like they're some cheap throwaway. That's the problem we have with society today. Our society treats kids as though, ah, they got time to get it right. No, 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 no. They don't have time to get it right. They don't have time to get it right. They can do and they can commit some life altering decisions right now that will change their life and others right now for the rest of their lives. So no, we don't, we don't play with them. And so when you give them this impression, this idea that it's okay to do church this way, it's not. Because what we're seeing here is not, that's not church. That's that's a gathering called a church, but what you're doing is just getting together. And in the meantime, while we're here, let's go ahead and open the Bible to make it seem like it's church. Because we're, we're supposed to at least give some semblance of church. And so what ends up happening is, as you diminish the view of church, as you diminish the view of God, his holiness. Because remember, guys, let's just, let me just drink my coffee for a second. I gotta, I must say this. Not just to the youth, but to the adults as well. I think what we do sometimes, guys, is we forget that we serve a holy God. We forget that we serve a holy God. He's God. He's not Kurt. He's not Jeremy. He's not Marcus. He's not Nadine. He's not Herman. He's not Millie. He's not Trisha. He's not Frank. He's not Albert. No, he's not. He's not Carol. He's not James. He's not Bonnie. He's not William. He's not Corey. He's God. And we forget that. We forget that he's God. 
and we should be honored to come before him. But it's gotten to the point, the more that we have dumbed this thing down and made it so casual that people can feel like they can just come as they are, stay as they are, be who they are, and remain that way for the rest of their life and then go to hell as they are. Find themselves surprised at being hell. How, how surprised was I to even find this particular clip of a person in church, maybe you all seen it, a person in church smoking. So they do have a smoking section in churches now. How comfortable, and you know what? I don't even blame her. I don't even blame her. Nope, because something was there to give her the impression that, yeah, I can go to church and light up or vape or smoke. I don't know if she, I, I guess she was vaping. I hope she was vaping. Because it, it takes a little bit of effort to light a cigarette up. You know, you put it in your mouth and <laughs> maybe that's what it was. Maybe she was vaping. But either do that. To feel so comfortable to do something so disrespectful. But Corey, smoking is not a sin. It is in church. <laughs> it is It is in church. Yeah, it is. It is in this holy, sanctified, supposedly, environment. But that church has given her the impression that it is okay. It's okay to... Uh, listen, let me just ball down some lanes for a second. Y'all forgive me, and God, somebody said strange fire. <laughs> That's what that was. Let me just bowl down some lanes. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that I'm going to lose some subscribers. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make some viewers upset. But doggone it, I don't care. Just because you're we're not into wearing our Sunday best. Just because we don't, you know, I get it. I don't I don't wear suits to church like I used to. But that don't mean that my reverence for the for the for the service and for God is is less. And I'm not going to treat it that way. Maybe we need to start making it mandatory to bring your hard Bible to church. Not your phone. Not your phone. Put an announcement up, turn your turn all devices off. Turn all your devices up, return your seats to upright and locked positions and then turn your devices off. That's what you ought to do. Because let's be honest, you can be on this phone pretending like you're, re you're reading the scriptures right along with them, but then you're smiling. What's, what'd you smile at? What'd you sm We're in the book of numbers. What are you smiling at? Oh, you're watching something on TV. Oh, you're checking some messages. And we've seen them. People have their phones out and they got everything else going on and the pastor is trying to preach. We come there with our slippers on, our house shoes on. Sometimes we just come looking like any old thing. We wouldn't go to work or we wouldn't go to the grocery stores looking sometimes the way that we look in church. Why? What's the problem? We have lost our respect and our reverence for the word. Go back to it again. And I think this is important, guys. We've changed. God had God is the one that said this. Now, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans and, and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it and offered strange fire to what the person said earlier, offered strange fire. But when they were consumed, notice what Moses tells Aaron that God said. Then verse three, Moses said to Aaron, it is what the Lord spoke, saying, those who come near to me, I will be treated as holy. Let me say it again. I will be treated as holy. Guys, that's a warning. You're going to treat me as holy. And if you get away once or twice or five times or ten times with not treating me like I'm holy, don't think I haven't noticed. This is God speaking. Don't think I haven't noticed. You're going to treat me as holy. And if you don't, I'll remind you. I'll remind you. I know just how much pressure to put on you. I put my thumb on you. I know just how much pressure to exert on you to make you call out to me. And remember, oh, he's God. I will be treated as holy. And before all people, I will be honored. 
You shall fear the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. And even recognizing the fear of the Lord, we warn people, but we don't do that. We don't warn people. We just, hey, listen, come on, be comfortable. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have, and I don't have a problem having fun in church, but can't you have fun in church with the word? Can't you have fun in church with the word? Now, Paul gives a warning. He says, I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will also will be led away from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. You want to add some more on top of this stuff. And I think you guys, since you want more, you think you need more, you think you're going to get more. What you're going to get is more than what you bargained for. Do not walk away the simplicity. He calls it the simplicity, the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. He didn't make it that hard, guys. He literally, God did not make it hard for us intentionally. You know why he didn't make it hard for us? Because we're dumb. You get mad at me if you want to. Let me let me just roll. Let me roll down the the, the list of adjectives that's going to upset you. But every last one of these adjectives that might upset you are true: dumb, stupid, hard-headed, moronic, idiotic. You name it. That's us. That's us. Think I'm wrong? Fine. Go ask God. Consult the Bible because he those are the words he uses. Us. That's how we are. We literally do some of the dumbest, most, I shouldn't say most stupid, stupidest things ever known to man as believers. And he's laid it out in a simple fashion, and we want to look for difficult ways to go about doing things. You look for more because he's not enough. If the word of God is not enough, then you don't know him. If the word of God is not enough, that's only because you don't know him. If the word doesn't deliver you, then you haven't met him. If after being a Christian, you still need deliverance because you were never delivered in the first place. Where in the, where in the Bible do we have multiple, multiple deliverances on one person? No. Whom the son sets free, that person has been set ontos. Indeed, completely. Thoroughly, fully, that person is set free. But we want to keep playing with, with people and giving them some dumbed-down version of Jesus. You will give an account. And just because your church serves that tea doesn't mean that you have to eat it. You can go and find another church. Yeah, Corey, but the, the church down the street, they're boring. Yeah, but they're going to heaven. Yeah, but this church, this church is, what's the word lit? Is that, is that, is that the word, young folks? The, this this church is lit. Man, we have fun at this church. And ooh, okay, this is for you single people. Ooh, the girls there are fine. Well, they got some nice, some nice single men there too. All you want to, you can go. Keep going there. Keep going there. Keep going into this pagan temple. Because they got a crunk. Is crunk still a word? Monkey Moose said crunk. I didn't know. Is it, wait a second, crunk. That was in the early 2000s, 90s? Okay, fine. Crunk. Crunk. <laughs> it's bad there. It's bad. Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll go back even further. This is out of sight. Huh, Carol? This is out of sight. Groovy. Man, it was happening. All of that. But this pagan temple with all those lights and smokes and so forth, that will get you to hell. That party bus to going to hell, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. A lot of drinking. A lot of <laughs> carousing. A lot of consuming. A whole lot of intermingling. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to feel good. It's going to feel great. You will have the time of your life, but your life will end just like that because you desire to be have, have your ears tickled you desire to, to find joy and comfort in something other than, than God. But had you simply just tasted and seen how good the Lord is, you would have not wanted that stuff. Is there a place for some tasteful lights? Sure. I don't have a, I don't I do not have a problem with lights. I really don't. I don't have a problem with, with using the screens in an in a creative fashion. And I really honestly don't have a problem with props 
every now and then. I got a problem when props, lights, stage performance is what you're known by. You should be known. I'm speaking to the pastors, the preachers, the churches. You should be known by the word. Let me go back to it again because I think this is very important. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is what we're here to preach. Euangelion, the good news. But what's the good news? The good news, as I said before, is not that salvation has come to the Jews. It's not that salvation has come to the Jew and the Gentile. Nope, that's not the good news. The good news is that salvation has come to the world permanently. And it's easy to have it happen. It really is. It's, it's, listen, it's one step. Faith, believe. There you go. And then watch these other things just start working itself out. Having faith. Having faith. Cash me, you still with me? He said, I'm still with you, brother. Unfortunately, though, this is not going to reach the people that go to those kind of churches. Because ah, I'm not doing what you're saying. And I don't know if some of you guys go to those churches. I don't know if you do or don't. Uh, I would say, I, what? I, I recently attended a church where service was held in the dark. Uh, only th <laughs> Okay. The only thing uh, lighting was the stage. And I can't say necessarily that was a good or a bad thing because I don't know what was happening on stage. I have, I've I've been in church service where the lights just kind of got darker, but the attention was on the on the, on the uh, the stage. But what they were saying was everything completely biblical. They weren't doing anything, you know, kind of weird or just because if I got to do some kind of tricks to get you to get you involved, then I don't know the word. I should be able to. Give the word in such a way that you, if if you can't understand and feel the conviction that comes from me, then I'm not doing my job. I'm not not being a, a very good preacher. And guess what? Services don't they don't have to be two hours long. Let me give all you guys who are prospective preachers, or if you want to go out and share the gospel, which is all of you guys, let me give you a tip. This is a sales tip but it's a gospel winning tip. Give as much as it's required. If it takes 10 minutes to give this message, give 10, don't give 11. If it takes 10, don't give five. Don't cut it off too short and don't go too long. You're not that smart. You're not that profound. You're not that great. Let the Lord work in you, but don't go too, don't overdo it. Wow, that was fun. They were, they enjoyed that. Let's do it again. What do, no. No. Let the word, and, and, and let me just say this again, and we'll go ahead and get out of here. But you want to be at a church where every now and then the pastor actually opens a book and gives some sort of uh, expository preaching. Expository preaching versus topical doesn't matter. In the topical he better be expounding, opening, and breaking it down. Because the problem is that we try to make the, the sermons relate too much to the people versus getting the people to relate to the sermon, to the word. There is our problem. But I promise you, I promise you guys, I've seen this. If you just open the word, let them see it themselves, people will start eating it up. Why? Because if they're actually in Christ, even if they're babes in Christ, they will desire that word like it is milk. And they'll grow and want more and more and more and more and more. And you don't have to sing songs as peaches, 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 whatever that song is. Now I got to go look that song up. I got to look that song up because now it, it is literally in my head, guys. So I got to go see what this song is about. I think I've heard my grandchildren singing that song or something like that. I think I think I heard my three-year-old grandson singing that song. I hope it's, I hope it's godly I hope, or at least not a bad song. But if my grandson, my, if my three-year-old is singing it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it probably doesn't belong in church. And I'm going to probably say that a 30, 40-year-old man ought not be pretending like he's playing Mario Brothers on stage and then become a cartoon version of the game and then start rapping. That's just me. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But I think the simplicity of the gospel is more than enough. Amen.